Hello everyone. In this video we're going to talk about uh, an example of a problem that you can work, similar to a problem that appeared on, on the worksheet from last time. Uh, let's suppose that you had a question like this. Find an upper bound for the absolute value of this integral where c is a circle of radius r and r is greater than 3 and the circle is centered at the origin. All right. Now the key phrase, uh, find an upper bound for the absolute value, uh, lets us know that we're going to be using the ML inequality. Uh, this is the theorem that we talked about in section 5.2, uh, which says that if you want to bound the modulus of a complex integral, all you have to do is uh, take a value m, which is greater than or equal to the modulus of the function everywhere on the curve, and times it by L, which is the length of the curve you're integrating uh, around. All right, so let's try and use this theorem. Let's apply that to this problem and see where it gets us. First of all, um, you've got to compute m and l. L is uh, going to be the easier one, often. L is the length of the curve. Now, if you uh, want to, you can use a, a calculus uh, tool. We know how to find the arc length of a curve. That was something covered in your second semester calculus, probably. But uh, often you'll find that the shapes we find uh, contour integrals around are very nice geometric shapes. Here we're dealing with a circle, so we're just going to find the length of that circle. Its uh, radius is capital R. So the length is simply a 2 pi r. That was easy enough. Moving on, let's talk about the, uh, the value m. Now remember, m is a value that is an upper bound for the function value modulus everywhere on the curve. So we want to take a look at the function that we're integrating and see what, uh, what bounds this. How big could this possibly be when I'm plugging in z's that belong to that circle c? Well, there are a couple standard tricks we're going to be using. Uh, first of all, we're taking the absolute value of a fraction. And uh, one of the properties of the modulus is that you can take the modulus of the numerator and the denominator separately and divide them. Another property is that uh, when you have a modulus of a power, you can just rewrite that as the, a power of a modulus. Now, there are a couple ways to, to go forward from here to find a value of m, um, some of them easier than others. One tool that will be uh, constantly used though in coming up with these upper bounds is the triangle inequality. So for our first approach we're going to use a version of the triangle inequality as we think about how big this fraction could ever get which is what m is supposed to um, bound. We notice that the top, the numerator, is just the modulus of z and we know the modulus of z since z is on a circle around about the origin we know exactly how big the numerator can get. However, we can make this value as big as possible by making the denominator as small as possible. So the question is how small could we make the denominator if we're dealing with points on this circle? Well, we're going to just use a, a triangle inequality. We know that when you take the absolute value of the sum of two uh, numbers, that's going to be greater than or equal to the absolute value of the difference of their absolute values. So if I want to make this as small as possible, this, I'm never going to get smaller than uh, the quantity described on the right there. So what that actually looks like, I would say that this fraction is going to be less than or equal to the fraction that has the modulus of z squared minus the modulus of 9 inside of the absolute value. And then of course the denominator is squared, so we, we square that as well. Now at this point, because we are integrating around a circle uh, centered at the origin with radius r, we know that for every point z on that circle, the modulus of z will be capital R. So I can just substitute that in, and I get a bound, an upper bound, on the function values on that circle. All right, so that will work. This is a, an expression that we can use for m. It's in terms of r because our, our curve is also in terms of r, which is we're not told exactly what r is. Now, this isn't the only way you can come up with uh, a bound on the function values, on the modulus uh, the function value. Another way we could have gone is, is this way, and this is a way that the, uh, the worksheet actually suggests that you follow. You can rewrite z squared plus 9 as z minus 3i times z plus 3i, and if you do that factoring, uh, we can attach the absolute value or, or modulus bars onto both factors in a product like that. And so we can then um, do kind of the same trick as before. Once I make that uh, change in the denominator, I'm going to try to make the denominator as small as possible so that the fraction gets as big as possible. And uh, to do that, I'm going to take the z minus 3i and replace it by 
the, abs the absolute value of the modulus of z minus the modulus of minus 3i. And we'll square that. And if we do that on both the factors, uh, we'll get an expression that looks pretty simple, actually. The, uh, the modulus of minus 3i and the modulus of positive 3i are, are both 3. And the modulus of z, like we said before, is going to be r because we're dealing with a circle. So we get a, an expression. Now this also will work as m, so which is the better one? The idea is that uh, it doesn't really matter in most cases. So we can take either one of these. The one on the right is um, a little bit easier to write down. Uh, it's very simple. You've just got linear factor on the bottom raised to a power and a power of r on the top. Here you have a quadratic factor squared again. Um, there isn't really much, much difference. Actually, if you want to see which is the better bound, uh, if we want to see which number gives you a closer, maybe, value to the actual uh, modulus of the integral, you might compare the size of these. Uh, what I've done here is just taken these expressions and plugged them into Wolfram Alpha and you'll see that the expression on the right is actually a lot bigger than the expression on the left. So if we're trying to get a closer estimate to the actual value, this would be a better upper bound to use. Now if we uh, put it all together, uh, we know that the uh, since the curve C has length 2 pi r, and we know that the function values on the curve are less than or equal to this, we'll go ahead and use the simpler expression there, then the ML inequality tells us that the modulus of our integral has value less than or equal to the product of those two things. So we get an expression here. All right, now that would answer the problem, and we could stop here. In this last minute, I just want to give you sort of a preview of where we're going with this, why this ML inequality is as important as we, we say it is. Um, you'll notice that as we uh, imagine a circle with larger and larger radius, what happens to this bound? Now as r approaches infinity, um, this is a, a, we've got a cubic expression of r on the top. We end up with having a r to the fourth on the bottom if we expand that all out. And as r goes to infinity, this expression is going to go to zero. Now what that means for the integral though, since the modulus of the integral is approaching zero, that must mean that the value of the integral is also approaching zero. Now, one of the things that we'll talk about over the next couple days is that actually in certain circumstances, the path that you integrate around does not actually matter. The value of the integral will be the same no matter what kind of shape you, you uh, integrate around. There, there's a little bit of technicality involved there, but let's just take that as, a, as true for right now in this certain circumstance. Now, if the size or the shape of the curve you integrate around does not actually matter, and we know that integrating around larger and larger and larger circles causes the answer to be closer and closer to zero, well then that would give us very good reason to suspect that the actual value of this integral is exactly zero. And that turns out to be the case. All right, so this ML inequality is going to uh, be a useful tool for us if we can get an upper bound on an integral and then show that actually in a limit, this upper bound goes to zero. That will allow us to conclude that certain integrals are actually equal to zero, which will be a very useful uh, technique to use. All right, that's an example of the ML inequality. If you have any other questions as you're going through your homework or looking over uh, the text or, or your notes, please let me know. Thanks.